Hello all and uh, welcome to today's uh, New Economy Fireside Chat Series with me, Ashish Mehra. I'm the Chief Research Officer of Markets and Markets. At m and we take great pride in transforming market intelligence into revenue impact for our clients. Uh, we focus our research on disruptive emerging technologies and futuristic trends, which could lead to significant shifts in your revenues in the coming decade or so. Now, through these new, uh, new economy fireside chats, our objective is to really share actionable insights on new revenue growth opportunities uh, from disruptions emanating from your uh, ecosystem. And they're usually based on the client work that we do as well as our own research. Now, our topic for today's fireside chat is futuristic applications of analytical instruments. Analytical instruments, uh, uh, as some of you might recall, are microscopes, uh, chromatography, uh, mass spectrometry, and associated instruments, which are see which till now were largely focused on research and life sciences, and we're seeing greater applications and and uh, uh, a, a huge burst in the market in the coming years. And for that, I'd really like to welcome my guest for today. Vijender. He leads our healthcare practice. Uh, Vijender, would you like to say a quick hello? Sure. Thanks, Ashish. Thanks for the introduction. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Vijendra, and um, I have a special liking for uh, AST market and have driven projects related to chromatography, mass spec, uh, PCR, NGS, etc. Apart from AST, I'm also uh, interested in IVD genomics. Uh, etc. And excited to be a part of this conversation. Thank you so much, Vijender. So Vijender, why don't we get started uh, by sharing a bit more about what are these various analytical instruments and what are their applications, where are they used, just in terms of some context setting. So if we were to list down all the analytical instruments, there would be 100 plus such instruments, plus uh, some software and tools to go with them. And some of the most frequently used uh, instruments are related to chromatography. Uh, there are 20, 30 types of spectroscopies, which include mass spec, uh, near infrared, Raman, UV, visible NMR spectroscopies. Uh, there are different types of microscopes like electron, uh, atomic force microscopes, confocal uh, fluorescence imaging, et cetera. Uh, then there's uh, next-gen sequencing systems, PCR, electrophoresis systems, flow cytometers, X-ray diffracto diffractometers, etc. And each of these instruments uh, have their own benefits or applications. If I talk about chromatography like liquid chromatography or gas chromatography, these are mostly used for purification of chemical compounds and downstream processing uh, in uh, downstream processing of molecules in pharma, biopharma, FNB testing, forensics. GC is mostly used in environmental and uh, air, pollut air pollutants testing, pesticides. Uh, spectroscopies have different applications in biology, analytical chemistry, environmental monitoring, agriculture. Uh, for example, structural analysis of compounds, measurements of metals in food and beverages, measuring CO2 levels in air, cosmetic analysis, et cetera. Nowadays, spectroscopy is also used in astronomy to study objects such as galaxy of stars. That's a mouthful already, Vijayathar. Ah, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. So help us understand why is this industry likely to boom, especially from new applications and end use industries? So if I look at the overall AST market, it's more than 100 billion uh, uh, market and growing at about seven to eight percent and um, the biggest technologies uh, that drive the, this market is uh, spectroscopy chromatography ngs microscopy pcr to name a few uh, spectroscopy chromatography are uh, are uh, estimated to grow about 5.5 to 6 percent primarily driven by the varied applications they are used into uh, however, the market will be, um, uh, or I would say NGS market will drive the fastest uh, and the estimated growth is about 18 to 20%. Uh, 
and primarily because uh, the cost of genome sequencing has come down from millions of dollars to thousand uh, dollars. It's 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 been used in personalized medicine as well. There are 50 plus projects going on globally by different countries and uh, different government. Some are using it for testing COVID. Some are making their own databases of population. Some are using it for uh, different infectious disease testing, etc. So these are some of the drivers of, of these technologies. But overall, if I have to look at drivers of AST market, uh, it can be bucketed into two. One is adoption of technologies, and the other is growing number of applications. And when I talk about technologies, uh, there is process automation or digitalization. So, uh, you know, labs across the world, they are increasingly adopting uh, automated solutions to optimize, optimize workflows, to uh, improve user interface and experience, to enhance interoperability. Uh, when it comes to um, hyphenated instruments, so there are two or three instruments which are clubbed together so that, uh, you know, you can take benefits of both together. Uh, some of those examples are LCMS, GCMS, uh, et cetera. And we're seeing emerging growth applications in, in uh, tandem systems as well. AIML is another technology where Shimadzu uh, or companies like Agilent are working a lot. Shimadzu has tied up with some universities wherein it's working with uh, remote labort uh, with, with those uh, uh, you know, uh, laboratories so on remote laboratories. There, there are other technologies like digital twin, blockchain, big data, et cetera. So Vajender, if I am a company operating in this space, providing equipment and consumables, mm -hmm. um, you, know, we, we, you know, what are the most attractive um, uh, end use industries uh, that I should be focusing on? And in those end use industries, what are the interesting emerging applications that uh, that I should prioritize? Great question, Ashish. So currently it's being used in um, life sciences, more of pharma, biopharma, a bit of clinical applications as well. It's being used in uh, FNB, environmental studies, petrochemicals, etc. When I talk about FNB, uh, right now it's being used in quantification of additives, detection of pesticide residues, analysis of contaminants and components of food, et cetera. Uh, in environmental testing, it's been used to, uh, to quantify trace quantities of pesticides or contaminants, uh, such as PCBs or PHs in wastewater, in oil, groundwater, soil, et cetera. Uh, in industry, it's being used in, um, in um, atomic and molecular composition of inorganic and organic materials, et cetera. Uh, it's being used in forensics, cosmetics, petrochemicals. Now, these are all the current applications. However, if I have to talk about some of the high growth applications, uh, uh, and um, if, I, if, I've if I divide the industry into verticals like life sciences, uh, chemicals, materials, agriculture, et cetera, in life sciences, primarily in pharma, biopharma, some of the major applications are gene therapy, oligonucleotide synthesis, human microbiome, single cell analysis, etc. Uh, and now talking about each of these applications, now taking example of gene therapy, the market is about $13 billion or it's going to be $13 billion by 2025. And the time for analytical instrumentation is about one fourth, that is about $3 billion, right? And the market is driven by increasing prevalence or incidence of cancer, increasing R&D activities because we're seeing a lot of new products coming up. Uh, Abecma was launched by Celgene, which is a BMS therapy. Uh, Brianzi was again launched by uh, uh, BMS um, in 2021. And some of the common technologies uh, that are being used in, uh, in gene therapy are chromatography, mass spectrometry, microscopes, flow cytometry, PCR, et cetera. And each of these technologies have their own applications. So for example, chromatography is being used in downstream processing uh, of virus preparations to be used as vectors. 
mass spec is used in vector protein characterization and post translational modifications analysis etc pcr is used for amplification of gene of interest next gen sequencing again sequencing of gene of interest so these are some of the uh, applications of these technologies and a few gene therapy companies that i would suggest uh, ast companies to tap are novartis gilead uh, jazz pharma orchard therapeutics bms amgen etc now talking about oligonucleotide synthesis that's again a 6 to 7 billion dollar market growing at about double digit growth rate that translates into an opportunity of 1 billion dollar for an ast company by 2025 right and that market is also growing fast because uh, uh, oligonucleotides are increasingly being used in in therapeutic applications such as you know dmd spinal muscular atrophy and of course growing focus on personalized medicine there are a lot of clinical trials as well going on on um, oligos um, some of them are on cancer central nervous system metabolic disorders etc yeah those those were some of the applications in um, in life sciences or biopharma we can also look at human microbiome of course it's a, it's a small market what about applications beyond life sciences and pharma maybe in environmental testing or other areas which you think will really fuel growth here in this market from a from a emerging application standpoint that companies should look at yeah so apart from life sciences if i talk about environmental sciences or chemicals and materials uh, the potential applications are uh, electric vehicles new materials which comprise of polymers adhesives and insulation there are bioplastics and biopolymers as well which we can uh, which companies can look at biofungicides or bioinsecticides is another potential market and if i have to uh, you know elaborate on each of these say for example ev new materials uh, that is again close to a 9 billion dollar market estimated to grow at a, 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 a high growth rate of more than 50% uh, and that translates into an opportunity of more than 2 billion uh, by 2025 for for any ast company and the primary growth driver is um, uh, you know the automobile manufacturers that are increasingly investing in uh, Uh, in evs uh, due to government regulations and incentives that they can get and some of these examples are toyota ford or volkswagen which are uh, investing in this market uh, if i talk about um, bio bioplastics and biopolymers again that's a 10 and a half billion dollar market growing at more than 20% growth rate Uh, and that offers an opportunity of more than 1 billion by 2025 and some of the technologies uh, that are frequently used here are chromatography which is used to determine the type and the quantity of polymer within microorganism uh, mass spec to to study the molecular structure of phas which is a bioplastic microscopes are used to study morphology and characteristics of microbes uh there are different types of spectroscopies that go into this ir fpir nmr that are used to assess the biodegradation process through the changes in the spectrum of bioplastics and some of the companies that can be targeted in the bioplastic space are natureworks braschem basf total Cor- Cor- corbion novamont etc uh there are other um applications as well in semiconductor and to name a few uh, there are iot sensors uh, ai chipset micro battery and silicon and solid state battery so these are some of the high growth applications that that company should look at going ahead and what do you see as a size of the price you know especially from these emerging applications in the next 5 years what's the kind of revenue opportunity that let's say a top 5 or a top 10 player could could make uh, if they were to properly tap this opportunity so even if a company uh, you know can tap into five to six major applications that i've uh, mentioned and they are able to take say conservatively 2% share in each of these applications by 2025 they can easily generate 
500 million uh, in the coming five to six years. Uh, and going by the calculations, they can earn about 80 to 100 million from gene therapy and an equal um, uh, revenue from EV new materials. They can even look at oligonucleotide synthesis, which can give them 40 to 50 million. IoT sensors can fetch them 90 to 100 million. Bioplastics and biopolymers, again, 60 to 70 million. And these are, these are some of the existing applications, Ashish. Uh, there are some of the nascent applications as well that they could look at uh, to, to grow in the market and uh, you know, uh, uh, get those, uh, those revenues from, from new markets. And some of, the, some of those uh, new applications uh, to look at, if I'm, if I'm taking a five to a 10 year horizon, uh, some of those nascent applications are proteogenomic market, uh, point of care diagnosis using mass spec. Now, mobile mass specs do exist, but these are miniaturized versions of mass spec, which companies like Atonar or SIF Technologies are working on. There is microplastic analysis and testing that uh, you know uh, that AST companies can look at. There is environmental chemical sensing using small drones that is again being studied by some of the universities. Uh, plus there are lithium metal batteries uh, that helps in eliminating dendrites and offer, offer more structural stability than a battery which consists of liquid or graphite material. So these are some of the nascent opportunities as well which companies should target. Great, thank you so much Vijayendra. I think that's a lot of very interesting ideas that you have shared with our audience today. Um, so thank you so much uh, for sharing very actionable insights into uh, where, uh, which applications and end-use industries uh, some of the companies could really target. Uh, folks, uh, we really hope you found this uh, talk uh, uh, useful. And until next week, uh, goodbye. Thanks, Ashish. Thanks for making me a part of this uh, NEP. Thanks a lot. Thank you.